Hey guys, welcome back with another video with Lindsay. Today we're gonna be doing the Malekith guide, ultimate guide, because I've already uploaded an early game guide, but I realized I missed out a number of things, mainly how the slave system works, mainly how Malekith should be built and how you should be fighting with him, as well as the fact that I realized also that we can get Malekith confederations early on and in a specific manner that doesn't hurt you, but it makes you just stronger. With that said, we're also going to use some exploits. So just straight out of the bat, if these exploits get fixed, there are solutions and I will discuss them as well. Because keep in mind, some exploits will get fixed. Um, I don't think the movement exploit is going to get fixed anytime soon, especially since Warhammer 3 is coming out. So if you're going to be playing Warhammer 2, it's probably going to stay there. But at the same time, also good to understand is that... Um, when you're playing on Legendary, you need to use all the cards given to you, because trust me, the AI is not going to hold back. With that said, let's just get straight into it. The first things we need to know about Malekith is that he has some really interesting mechanics, two of, of which are the personal trait, which gives him cheaper Black Guard of Negron and Dress Spears, Bleak Swords and Dark Shards, which is going to be really important as the Witch King of Negron, this is the trait we're talking about, as we're going to build an army of Dark Shards early on, eventually transitioning to Dark Shards with Shields or Shades, according to the situation we are in. Secondly, and this is very important, the experience that Malekith gains is going to be shared with all of the Lords that he has. So, Spamming Lords will make Malekith level up much slower, at the same time we can and will give him as much experience early game as possible before we get too many Lords. And to do so, we're going to use a number of tricks and tips by eliminating the Skaven. Looking at the map where he spawns, he spawns of course in Negarond in the region of the Iron Mountains and you have an enemy over here, you're at war with Clan, I believe it's Clan Septic. Uh, yeah. Clan Septic over there, they have three regions. They're not very strong, they don't have any particularly strong army, but they have Hulk Alter, Alter of Ultimate Darkness, and Rectu Gorge. You're gonna really want this region to be stabilized as soon as possible, as it will give you the strength you need to start the campaign in full force. To your right, you're gonna have Garond, which have three regions, then you're gonna have Harganet, they're at war with each other, and what we're gonna try and do is confederate Harganet as soon as they capture the Great Arena, that will give us a direct link to Harganet and access to the Deadwood Sentinels as well, who don't really hate us, don't really like us, but that's going to be really important to do in the early game. Down to the south, there are some orcs, there is, of course, Grand Hyro uh, Kant Katep, uh, I think I pronounced that wrong, <laughs> Hyro Kant, Hyro Kunt, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to be careful before YouTube blocks me. And Clan Karond over here is also a big, big thing. Clan Karond is a mushy bullet uh, absorber and will completely get wrecked by uh, the Dreadforge. By down here, we have Stretch Craven Tail and of course the other enemies down there. But not enough to worry us at the moment. The first things you want to do in the campaign is um, understand how the economy works. With regards to the economy, you need to look into the slaves. And I'm going to explain these in detail later on. But the more slaves you have, gives you the more money and you're going to be able to manage this through your slave panel i will show you this in a campaign which is much later on and show you what you want but keep in mind always have request additional slaves on your main region which is iron mountains your second region that you're going to get is over here karkaron uh, not karkaron 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 i i forget what it's called but you're go yeah karot kar sorry because Karkaron and Karotkar, you want Karotkar because it gives you really, really stupidly strong buffs to help you with your slaves. That as well, and you're going to need masters. Now, if you don't have access to masters, that's absolutely fine. Just keep in mind, you're going to be losing a number of slaves per turn. Things we're going to want to do is to take Halkaldra. To do so, we're going to use our... Um, Sister of the Dark, she is perceptive, she's not really that good. Um, it's really important to use your mage uh, later on in the campaign, but early on you're going to want to use the cheese. And the cheese, the movement cheese, is very simple. You just do this. If you don't know what, how to do this yet, there is a video I did specifically on movement cheese and how to use heroes to exploit the AI as much as possible. This is really a uh, useful early game and it helps your... Um, it helps your campaign in general. 
But let's, uh, once I finish doing this, as you can see, we're not wasting any movement on oh, Nalakid. But anyway, you do this long enough and you get the Hulk Aldra. So here we managed to make it to Hulk Aldra. We're still on turn one. And we're going to auto-resolve this fight. You can fight it manually, but realistically speaking, your uh, army is going to do absolutely fine. You're not going to be able to get this many kills on your uh, Cold One Chariots manually as it does on the auto-resolve. Now, this is the first uh, slaves you get. You want to loot and occupy. You can suck and occupy. You should have enough movement, but it's not worth it. Loot and occupy. Make sure that you get a bit of money, you get a bit of slaves. And over here, we recruit the first three units. Uh, first building you build here is Dark Elf Manors. And over here, you upgrade the Nagarond um, main settlement. You can fix this, but it, it will generally fix itself. You do need the money. You move the uh, Dark Sorceress close to Malekith, and you level up Malekith by giving him Root Marcher. That is your first turn. Uh, with regards to research, you always want to go down... Uh, where is it? Casualties captured post-battle. You want to continue slave supply. So you're going to get there. That takes 14 turns, but it's really, really important. Keep in mind that you have Mung up here. They can declare war on you. Eventually, you want to go up and blow up those settlements. It's not worth settling them early on because the chaos corruption is just absolutely insane anyway with that said uh, we can move on to turn two and turn two we're gonna go for ultimate altar of ultimate darkness you should be able to get to altar of ultimate darkness and once again it is an auto resolving fight uh, as you notice we're getting much stronger because we're adding a lot of um, Dark Shards. The more Dark Shards you have, the stronger is his army. They are ridiculously cheap on their Malekith. Um, as you can see, we're also leveling up. And now we want to get Dreaded Slaver up to as big as possible. And then one in Infamous Raider, because you're going to be raiding a lot of settlements. Uh, at the same time, over here, you do the same thing and get Dark Elf Manors, because you want your growth to be as fast as possible over on this side. Malekith over here is now going to be at 14 units, but it should be more than enough to defeat Rectu Gorge. Now, with regards to diplomacy, this is where the diplomacy starts. You're going to go to Hagrief, you cannot really confederate him yet. Sometimes you're able to confederate him on turn 5, as he gets absolutely wrecked by the lizard tribe here, the Ita Itza tribe. But realistically, this is more easy to do. You give a defensive alliance with... Uh, so you first do military access, then you should be able to get a defensive alliance eventually with Kron Halebron. And she should start getting ready to confederate with you. You can get confederation with her on this turn um, if you do certain actions on the first turn. I have a video on that, but it is not ideal because you end up at war with too many people. And this cave in always kind of muck your shit up. And that is essentially all you need to do for the second turn. Over here, we notice in two turns we already have three settlements. We expanded very fast and we're doing very well for ourselves. On turn 3 we're going to use the last movement cheese bug over here to get rid of the last settlement that is owned by the Skaven. And this is important because there is a mountainous pass here, Hans' movement speed is going to be greatly reduced for your general. And you kind of get want to get rid of them as soon as possible just before the rebellion so then your public order is fixed on this turn. On this turn also you're going to want to get more um, diplomatic relations with Kron. Uh, so you get defensive alliance with her and she will then probably want military alliance and eventually next turn you'll be able to confederate her. It's really important you get those two alliances. At this point you get to wreck the gorge. This is the last settlement of the Skaven and you simply resolve it, uh, loot and occupy and this makes sure that you're going to have um, really bad public order but that's going to be wiped out next turn as you're going to have the rebellion at this point you want Malekith to recruit for one last time three dark shards over there and as you can see his army is filling up quite nicely this is the fastest i know that you can conquer the iron mountains and i think it's quite useful now at this point you could do one of two things you could destroy it add the conscription holes here and then rebuild it over here uh, which is absolutely fine to do i i usually like to keep it on um negaron as it will allow you to get mustering holes earlier but keep in mind that there are other buildings you can build in negaron and other more important buildings namely 
the dark shard buildings then of outlaws then of is going to give you the uh sort of dark shard shades uh, it's going to give you access to shades and shades are ridiculously important important for dark elves with the exception of malekith all the other lords you want to have shades with great sword spam and some of course reaper ball throwers as they're going to give you the best uh, value for your money With regards to which um, commandment you shall give, you want to give yourself increased slave production quotas, which gives you growth and income from slaves. At the moment, we have almost a thousand slaves, but that will increase and you'll be absolutely fine. At this point, also, you want to see if you can confederate uh, Kron Hellebron at the start of next turn, uh, hopefully that she would have taken up the great arena. She's recruiting an army. Um, if you don't recruit her next turn, you can recruit her in turn five. So at the start of turn four, you're gonna notice that you're gonna be able to confederate Harganet. I would not recommend doing so. Now you can if you want to. You get a second army, but then you'll have to start a war with Garon, as you will want the settlements of Garon, especially for the gold mine that they have in their capital. But keep in mind, Garon is gonna be a drain on your resources, which you don't really want to have, especially with Malakit being on the other side. What I do recommend instead is let uh, Kron Hellebron uh, do her own thing for the next few turns and then confederate her later on. And of course, her uh, opinion view is only increasing as time goes on rather than decreasing. With that said, your target should be the Broken Chains over here. Finally, I would highly recommend putting the Dartella Chillmate in the army with um, Malekith and finally start moving towards Shutrek Mount. Um, I would recommend using her to push a little ahead so you don't have a problem in dealing with Shutrek Mount uh, having a little bit of a distance. But we're gonna aim at getting Shutrek Mount, Krakor Deep and then move on to Hagreef. With regards to Negarond over here, uh, we demolished that. I should have done it last turn. And you're gonna want to build Slave Pens and you're gonna want to build Dark Elf Manors. The reason why you want to build Slave Pens is very simple. You want access to the Dark Arcs, uh, Black Arcs sorry, as fast as possible. These will allow you to recruit your units uh, anywhere on the map. They will provide bombardment support and as well as provide an, an additional army that does not have supply lines issues. The only limit of limitation, of course, is they will be stuck on the sea, but when you use them to assault the High Elves, they're going to be ridiculously important, and you want to get as many of them as possible, because there's a 25 cooldown duration for each time you enact this. So, let's just march towards Shotrick Mount and start. Now, as you can see, we cannot get to Shutrek Mount directly because of the issue <laughs> that um, our army does not get there for like two points. So we're going to use a little bit of our usual cheese and move slowly, 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 giving us the edge that we need to be able to assault this. As you can see now, we can assault it as we have the correct movement range. We're going to drag in our allies into this war and before we uh, auto resolve the battle we will wait and circle perfect and you should have more than enough movement to rejoin the army and uh, give us that little bit extra uh, umph just putting her back in the army allows you to auto resolve this you're gonna lose your dread spears you kind of want to get rid of them and replace them with more dark shards but that's absolutely fine Loot and occupy the settlement and hopefully the uh, beastmen stay there so you can defeat them in the next turn. You put in uh, Dalkarf manners over here or if you want, uh, something I would recommend also, you could put in construction, conscription halls but you don't really need to do so. You build Dalkarf manners, um, you give Malekith Dreaded Slaver and you give her Madame Fireball. Recruit. You can replace the dress piece as soon as possible, don't worry too much about it. You took some damage, but you'll be able to recover. That was his army entirely, and you're going to be able to kill him very, very easily. Over the end turn, you're going to get attacked by them. They're going to siege your settlement, but do not think much of it. You're going to be able to win that fight with the garrison that you have. I'm very surprised they did not siege, because usually at this point they would siege. 
Crone is doing exactly what we want her to do. Once she settles the Great Arena, we will occupy her. She usually takes this by turn 5, but, you know, stuff changes. Plus, you're going to get two really big armies as well. So when you join Confederation, you're going to be absolutely fine. You're going to want to disband one of the armies, but, yeah. They're, they're semi-decent armies, as well as having uh, that. Now... We cannot get to Kragor Deep this turn, and that is essentially take us getting attrition. But at the same time, they do not really have an army at all, so you're gonna be fine. You could f do Force March, or you could use the cheese uh, from the Mage to move forward, which I will use, so we'll get there on the same turn. If you take another turn, keep in mind they will start recruiting 6 units per turn, since this is um, on Legendary. With this, uh, getting here um, should finish the bone break, uh, the the broken chains. I was going to call them bone breakers, as they're, you know, that's their last settlement and their last army, and that is relieving yourself of a massive pain in the ass that you're going to have. So now your next target is going to be uh, Clara Carond. And that's going to be really important to take Hag Grief, as this is a really, really useful settlement to have. Keep in mind that you still are under siege by there, but you're going to be able to come and rescue with Crown Halebron if you do not feel comfortable using the army which you have inside Nagaron to beat that rebellion. So we got very lucky, and uh, Halebron decided to attack and defeat the rebellion for us. Usually the Rebellion attacks us and she takes the Great Arena, uh, but that's absolutely fine. At this point, I think it's good to let her suffer a defeat and then confederate her. We can still confederate her anytime we want, so there's no rush in that. Keep in mind, we can also give a check out what's happening down here. And he is yet... Wait. He is yet to take the settlement. He is sieging it and is chilling down there. He might lose the entire army as he attacks there. It seems he already lost his um, Black Ark. It will come back, but that might be good for us. Uh, what you could do is you could declare war on these guys, and that will give you more relationship with Hagrif, but it's not much of an issue. this point just charge your army up to here and you bring this uh, into the army once again and next turn you'll be able to take high grief and that will be essentially the guide they're not gonna attack you and they don't really have a strong enough army to be able to do any real damage to you this turn you want to Sorry, you want to do the sacrifice to Matlan and you want to recruit your Black Ark, which you can do over here. You get a Fleet Master, which makes him uh, resistant to missiles and gives him, of course, the unbreakable trait. Giving him that, you're going to have the ability to support armies with Sky Cauldron, Soul Rain, and Cane Slash as you assault Hag Grief over there. Upgrade the buildings as you see fit. Now, some of the buildings that are best to upgrade are in Halkaldra or Ragdu Gorge. Ultra of Ultimate Darkness is a little bit too exposed to Mung over there, and you are going to end up in a war with Mung eventually. As you see, the army moved from High Grief to Circle of Destruction, and that will allow you to pretty much just prance forward and declare war on them, and you'll be able to take High Grief very, very easily. And I'll show you how to do a siege with the High Elves, oh, sorry, Dark Elves. Well, technically it wants to be known as the High Elf. First thing you're going to do is grab your entire army and put it to the side, as you can see over here. Just chuck it into the area, as always, with all sieges in this game. You're going to tank the siege towers, which are lords and heroes, and then use your siege to break down the tower, 
then use your archers to deal the rest of the damage that is needed. Your melee is not going to be needed in this case. Oh, I did not know he could get that. It's our deployment and we're gonna focus over there. Of course, turn off fire at will from all of your units. Fast forward and put Malakit forward so she has very little health. Now, while we're doing this, it might be also good contention to speak. The Dark Elves' strongest thing is they have access to fire magic, and getting fire magic is ridiculously important for them for a number of reasons, but mainly fire magic is the strongest lore of magic there is in the entire game, and being able to spam out sorceresses of fire as well as hero, as lords, army leaders, generals that have fire magic, that is absolutely madness. Being able to get Fire magic allows you to have access to lots of infinite magic cheese as well, which you can use if you have more than one spell in this case. If you have fireball uh, automatically and then you have burning head, you can use it in a way to cast infinite burning heads, which will essentially create a doom stack where you just need a general and one single uh, sorceress on the dark pegasus and you can beat the entire enemy forces. Now, taking out the siege, uh, the, their tower over there, you start bombarding their archers. It's important to kill as many, many of their archers as possible before uh, then going in to waste their ammunition. That did not work as intended. It actually damaged the walls quite heavily there. So, um, we want to waste their ammunition uh, as soon as we get rid of some more of them. Keep in mind, if you kill uh, an archer, they're gonna have all their ammo die with them. And do that. Yeah, boom. And kill. Oh, alright, perfect. Then you're gonna get your dark shards, you're gonna align them up like so, and like so. And even if they bring units forward like in this case they're not gonna really have a good time uh, open fire and just clean them up they don't have that many troops so it's gonna be absolutely easy for you to just wipe out all of their missile units over there and anything as they throw on the wall they're just gonna die you have more than enough firepower if the army stays inside you're gonna need to be a little bit more careful and you might need to just uh, do the battle a number of times before taking it you can do this siege twice in one turn as you have more than enough movement speed to do so just keep that in mind when you attack the settlement it's make a, a judgment call based on how many troops there are in the settlement before actually attacking and uh, you could put ten timer. In fact, I have a timer in case it runs out. I'll be able to withdraw and reattack on the same turn. But in this case, I will not. I usually like to put it at forty minutes when doing sieges, and that is the siege done. We've taken uh, hey grief. Taken a few losses, but nothing really major. Whereas we've taken essentially we've taken the settlement without any damage, and we'll also be able to recover most of our losses. That our injured units will be stronger than they were before. If they attack us, they'll be the ones to suffer because now we're also going to have Burning Head. You can, of course, want to loot and occupy this settlement. And as you can see, the army is pretty much full health. You're going to want to give Driftmaster to Malekit and you're going to want to give her Burning Head. Now, essentially, that you have Burning Head uh, in the current patch, that uh, is of February 2021. You have infinite magic over there and you can pretty much win almost any fight the same turn you're gonna want to upgrade the tower over there and you're going to want to uh, keep an eye on the man blight tribe over here as well uh, you'll notice that there is of course the access of the heck which are currently down this way they're le running up to the red desert and they're gonna be a problem so you're gonna want as soon as you stabilize this region includes up uh, Garand, who's going to be your next target as soon as you confederate her you're going to want to blitz down Garand as fast as possible and we're going to confederate her uh, next turn after she does her recruitment and then we're going to go bind uh, Garand down as as needed 
you will get a rebellion down here keep in mind we've been sacking like, and looting and everything just wipe it out it's another resolvable fight and it's essentially just free slaves um something i uh, I, I pressed the wrong button there continue slaves okay, that's fine something i forgot to do is that you want to stop no more slaves here as soon as you capture the first settlement there are a few slaves in there, so don't worry too much. Most of the slaves are already going to the Iron Mountains, but it's important to do press that button as it helps immensely. Um, Madame gets Kindle Flame, and that essentially makes her as strong as needed right now. He is going to go down this way, and you're going to go in ambush stance, just in case they're going to come up for you. The reason why you're going to go in ambush stance is because they do have an army, even though they're going to really struggle against the forge bound the forge bound are going to start liking you more because you're beating up on them as well with regards to the crone over here she does have a decent army and you're going to want to confederate her now the reason why you want to confederate her now it's going to cost you a lot yes because she does have a ridiculously uh, large army first things first uh, you're going to want to disband her troops now she has low loyalty if a unit has loyal loyalty because generals have loyalty for the dark elves you throw them on the sea and you disband them on the sea that way they do not rebel loyalty is a mechanic that comes with the dark elves which essentially allows you to have she has no movement it gives you the ability to you know control your lords according to the loyalty they have different loyalty means um, that they're either loyal to you uh, or they're not in this case we're gonna have I'm not sure why that didn't work we're gonna have all these troops go to uh, Morati uh, we're just gonna remove the bleak swords because I believe they're useless and we're gonna disband this this is important if it's positive loyalty you disband everything in one go uh, yeah, did not affect her loyalty and you disband her in one go still means we have an income of minus 3000 that is going to be fine we're gonna go and we're gonna start beating up on Garon there is also the option of deleting the army and moving on with that as you were but a war with uh, Garon is actually useful with regards to here you see what they have and you start building the slave gates uh, or in the case walls because this is going to be your settlement that protects you from the uh, this direction you also have slave plans for public order and you can start recruiting uh, masters the reason why you want to recruit masters is they eventually there is no decent master available but we're going to recruit uh, spiteful is actually okay and perceptive whatever you recruit masters as you need two or three of them to be able to get this uh, which is uh, syncopatic schemer which reduces the slave, uh, slave decline line mi minus 10 percent that's going to be really important to be able to stabilize the slaves in this region talking about slaves do not forget to do no more slaves over there so um alessa managed to get around our ambush by passing right next to the mountains and she is going to try and take Kago deep from us uh, but that's nothing to really worry about um, those two settlements are you just wanted to take out the uh, incursions from the uh, you wanted to take out the uh, orcs as fast as possible it's not a problem this army is not really strong it cannot really do much damage them sacking those settlements is absolutely fine you're gonna go and take circle of destruction here even if it's gonna put you in contact with a lot of other dark elves and of course the skaven but you want to just get rid of uh, their main settlements they have all of these down here sorted but you want to go and rush uh clark Carond over here and take it from them you take that you're gonna be able to do immense damage to them we get lightning strike on this turn, turn 10, and we give her second level in burning head. You can still use her to move fast, but at this point you need to level her up. With regards to Crone Halebron, you can start a war with Garond. Keep in mind Garond is <laughs> relatively strong over here, or you could just uh, move down. Now, since I decided I want to start a war, I'm going to start a war, and I'm going to beat the living bejesus out of Garond. As you can see, their army is not really that strong, so it's going to be absolutely fine. 
you're gonna auto resolve that and you're going to loot and occupy this settlement from them. How was she leveled up? She did not get the Dark Steed. Okay, Dance of Dead, the AI leveled her up appropriately. You need all the three of these, so it's it's fine. The AI sometimes make uh, really bad leveling up choices, but yeah. In this case, you also want to start leveling up her that hag, and her that hag is really, really strong to have. As you can see, her army is actually ridiculously powerful as it is right now. You can make it even more powerful by getting the uh, dark, more dark shard with shields, but at the moment, it as it stands, it's absolutely fine. You can recruit. You cannot recruit any dark shards here, but uh, you can recruit some uh, black arc uh, corsairs, so it is uh, all good. Settlement upgrades. You're gonna have various of them. Um, you could do that or you could just wait and just upgrade your main settlement. Megarond is really important to upgrade in general. We have been placed in a really tricky position. I don't usually get offered peace treaties, uh, but I think it's good to mention it. If they offer you a peace treaty at this point, it might be a good idea to accept as if you keep expanding south, you're going to meet the high elves. Usually I get to hear hold of this, this region and nothing really happens, but accepting this peace treaty will be beneficial in this case if it gets given to you. It's, it's the first time I ever got it, um, as it will stop you from expanding further to south. And I know for a fact that the Skaven will at some point declare war on you, as even though they're in Hotex Column just chilling there, they will get prissy and want to expand very soon. So either they attack you or anyone around you. So it's better that they have a weaker uh, enemy that they fight. Keep in mind also we're, we're settling up, up here with Garand. We want to st stabilize this region before expanding further south. So yeah, in this case I will accept. It will put you at low reliability, but that is absolutely fine. Get rid of this rebellion. I have dark purpose. By you get rid of the rebellion by f forwarding Malekith up here to deal with this anyway. And slave, and that gives you a little bit more money. Now, you move, you see this little gap over here, you move up to there and you go in ambush stance as they will have an army in there. Their army is much weaker than yours in general, but it's good to be in ambush so they might decide to come to the great arena and deal with you there. You throw Malekith in the garrison there and a level up Burning Head. You're going to soon have Flamestorm. We're having ridiculously bad luck with the ambush. The AI decided to go around us rather than attacking us directly, but that's absolutely fine. And with this, you should be able to auto-resolve this fight and beat up um, Garon's primary army. And at this point, it is all you need to do. You siege Garon, you take it out next turn as you just put some siege equipment and uh, you'll be able to deal with this very easily. After that happens, you're going to go into this band, Crone's army, um, or another way you could do it, you could throw the army inside the the Dreadarch, disband her, and uh, bring up Malekith to deal with the remaining of settlements up here, as, of course, we are now at peace with Karkaron. Uh, usually, if you don't get the peace with Karkaron, you just stay sacking and raiding these settlements. Uh, getting Spite Reach and getting uh, Kurak and then use Ashrek as a sack settlement to level up your lords. So after you use Ashrek as a sack settlement, you're going to want to start thinking about the long term. The long term in this scenario is not forget to stop slaves from going in certain areas. Keep upgrading your main region for slave income. You do so by increasing your slave pens. So you want to build a slave pen in every single one of these as it increases your slave capacity. You're going to want to upgrade uh, Nagarant as much as possible and build that up. Late game, you're going to want to have uh, Nagarant as your slave capitals and you're going to want to have the broken lands as your secondary and your tertiary will want to be is either Itain or Yverus because they have really good um, slave capacities 
But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, this is how not to suck with Ma Malekith of the Dark Elves in Total War Warhammer 2. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I shall see you tomorrow or tonight or whenever you decide to come back. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, this is an opportunity for me to tell you to subscribe. Click the subscribe button and it's also, um, you know, lovely if you were to leave a like or a comment telling me what you liked about this campaign. Uh, next uh, campaign that I will do How Not to Suck is going to probably be Count Noctilus. However, I will put up a poll with four different lords and you guys get to choose which one of them you'd like to see. I'll include some of the lords that I have not yet carry, uh, covered and uh, we'll move on from there. Have a lovely day and I shall see you tomorrow. Yeah. Worst outro in history.